Hello, in this session we will be looking at single nucleotide polymorphisms, or what we commonly call SNPs, or SNPs. We first want to be able to define exactly what a SNP is. We will look at a particular human gene in the NCBI SNP database, and then pick out one of those SNPs from that gene and analyze. So a SNP is basically a variation within a population. When I say variation, I mean that different members of the same species, so if it's human, that means two different humans, may differ in DNA at a particular location. So think of it this way. As humans, most of us have roughly the same DNA. That's what makes us human. But there are particular locations in the genome where there are variations, and that's what we call SNPs. Here is an example of a particular SNP. Here is a particular DNA sequence, so in black is the common sequence that humans have. It begins with C, A, T, and then over toward the red bracket is G, A, T. A slash G means that some people have an A at that position and other people have a G. And there is the SNP. The A, G variation is the single nucleotide polymorphism, and followed by the C, A, A, and the rest of that DNA sequence. There are many categories of SNPs, but we will focus on three. Non-coding SNPs are SNPs that are outside the coding region. So if non-coding SNPs are the SNPs that are outside coding regions, then we can classify SNPs that are within a coding region. Within a coding region, there are two categories. Synonymous SNPs occur when the amino acid does not change. So it's within the coding region, but remember that sometimes different triplets code for the same amino acid. So if you change the DNA, but you still get the same amino acid, then that is called a synonymous SNP for the same amino acid. When the amino acid changes, we call that a non-synonymous SNP. So there are two categories of coding SNPs, non-synonymous and synonymous. We could also look at it this way. Non-coding and synonymous are two categories of SNPs where the DNA changes, but protein sequences do not. Non-synonymous are the only SNPs that change the protein sequence. The gene that we will look at is the human thyroidoxin gene. The gene symbol is TXN. I chose that particular gene because it is relatively small and it is very conserved. So what that means is because the sequence is very important, it is somewhat intolerant to changes in the protein. So we will see fewer SNPs in this gene compared to many other genes. First, we are going to take a look at this particular gene in the UCSC genome browser. So I'm going to just type in TXN. That gets me Homo sapiens thyroidoxin. I configured the view to show the gene structures. If you look at RefSeq genes, you will see two different transcript variants. The arrows point to the left. This is a complementary strand gene, so exon 1 is at the far right. Exon 2 is the next one. Exon 3 is present in the bottom transcript, but not the top one. This is differentially spliced. So 4, and the last one is 5, and that includes the stop codon. Where it becomes more narrow, that's where the untranslated region starts. The coding region is covered by the wider part of the box. And then the connecting lines represent the introns, which are not part of the final transcript. Below it, we see a bunch of single nucleotide polymorphisms that I have highlighted now. Their identifiers all begin with RS. Most of them are black. Those are the non-coding SNPs. The blue represents SNPs that are in the untranslated region of the mRNA. They're also non-coding. The green SNPs represent synonymous SNPs. The red represent non-synonymous SNPs. So all of the red ones, you see one, two, three, uh, about 10 or 11, are changes to an amino acid. I should also point out that the explosion in DNA sequencing technology has also led to a dramatic increase in the number of SNPs. Because we are able to sequence more and more individual human genomes, we are finding more and more variation and a lot more SNPs. I would say at least 70% of these SNPs were likely discovered within the past two years. This is the variation image for the thyroidoxin gene in the Ensemble database. 
Remember that this is a right-to-left gene. Their notation is that the empty box is the untranslated region. The filled-in gold boxes represent the coding region. You see that all the exons are highlighted. What you also see are a bunch of SNPs. They highlight the ones that are in the coding region. This one in green, you see the green E to E. That means that the DNA change keeps the amino acid E, or glutamic acid. It doesn't change, so that is a synonymous SNP. The yellows represent non-synonymous SNPs. This particular E to K SNP means that the DNA changes glutamic acid E to lysine K. That is a non-synonymous SNP, so you see where those are located. Here is the actual gene view in the DB SNP database at NCBI. In the table, every two lines represent a SNP. So here is in red a non-synonymous SNP. You see that some people have a C at this position and some have a T at this position of the DNA. What that does is that if you have a C, then you have a threonine at position 81 of the protein. If you have a T, then you have isoleucine at position 81. Below that is a synonymous SNP. You see that glutamic acid, or E, whether or not you have a G or an A in the DNA, then you still have glutamic acid at position 68. However, also at amino acid 68, but at a different position of the triplet, the synonymous one is at the third position of the triplet, and this one is at the second. If a G changes to an A at that second position, then that is one off in the DNA. It's position 408, not 409, in the transcript. That changes the amino acid from glutamic acid to glycine. Where it says contig reference, that means that that is the sequence that is in the database. People who have that A have glutamic acid, and people with the G variation have glycine. You see some alternating green and red. They hide the intronic non-coding ones because it would make the table really enormous. So you can expand to get those open. Let's look at this particular SNP that turns glutamic acid to glycine. The identifier is RS11555801, so let's click on that. It takes me to some information, so you see that it is an A to G change. And here is where it is graphically. So here is the RS11555801. You see the previous exon on the far right, and then in what is the last coding exon, you see a vertical line that shows exactly where that SNP is located. If I scroll down, I can also get, in some cases, population data. It looks like the A allele is a lot more common than the G allele. In the European population sample, it looks like 100% have an A. And same with the Asian population and even the sub-Saharan African population. So this is a pretty rare SNP. Most people have an A at this position, and it is very rare that we would see the G. Now, remember that thyroidoxin is a very conserved gene. It is pretty intolerant to change, so it is not surprising that SNPs here are very rare. For some other genes, you might find breakdowns that are as even as 50-50. So that concludes this rather quick tour of the SNP database. Please feel free to explore the SNP database and find some information about particular genes. You may want to look up some disease-causing genes, for instance, cystic fibrosis. Good luck.